So this is the interview where I expose my truth, if you like. Um, my life really changed dramatically after 9-11 and after the Twin Towers and Building 7 went down. Um, I flew to New York, it was about three weeks later, and uh, I remember looking down at the Twin Towers and uh, I had gone to a restaurant in Wall Street and I probably only had about I think I had $150 on me for the whole trip, so I didn't have much money. And I can remember I, I wanted to go to a restaurant in Wall Street, and uh, I think I, I bought the smallest things there, and there was about $35, so that, that took a lot of my money away from me. And as I was leaving the restaurant in Wall Street, so all of you couldn't see the wreckage of the Twin Towers from the ground level because it was all boarded off. As I was leaving the restaurants what the um one of the staff said take a look outside at the um at the view and uh i took a look outside and below me was the wreckage of the twin towers and of course i could also see the statue of liberty and um i spent a lot of my life reading about philosophy and great people, so I would read things from uh, Confucius, Lao Tzu, Aristotle, Plato, um, uh, Socrates, Archimedes, Galileo, Einstein, Martin Luther King Jr., um, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Winston, Winston Churchill, and I was always learning and learning. And I remember looking at the Twin Towers, and I thought, and I thought to myself. Um, something good will come out of this. I don't know what it is, but something good is going to come out of it. And I thought of Sir Isaac Newton's quote, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if there is darkness and destruction going out, then there has to be light and love and peace come in the other way. And uh, I left then, and then I think it was several months later, I remember revisiting, um, looking at the movie, The Matrix. I'd seen it a couple of times before, but I just couldn't understand it. It was just a very strange story, but I liked the Kung Fu and stuff. And um, after that experience and after a decision that I had made, I started to understand that movie more and more. And with the matrix, you will see there's code in it and they read by code. And around that time, I started to see things in my own life uh, with different code. And one of the things that stood out to me, um, as I mentioned in a previous video, that it was the Oasis song all around the world that got me through a very challenging time in my life. And um, what I could see then when I was looking at the names, is I could see that the word Liam spelt backward was male, as in just a message. Um, Noel is another word for Christmas carol. Gala is a festival. And Oasis is a place of peace and harmony. And um, in other videos, and I will go into talk a bit more about them. Um, but that was very sort of life-changing. The other thing that I noticed around that time was I was on a train and um, I had the map of Great Britain in front of me and I could see that the last um, four places that I had lived, I could see Arbroath in Scotland when I was with 2-9 Commando Regiment Royal Artillery. Then I was in Park Lane in London as a bodyguard. Then I was in Cardiff working as a personal trainer and then I went back to Haverford West and when I was looking at it I could see that it was in the shape of the number seven if you turn it around and put it into a mirror and as I was on the train um, some people ask me why is the number seven relevant uh, to my life and this is the explanation of it so I also realized that I was in seven commando battery 
and I did not want to be in seven commando battery. I wanted to be in eight battery or seven nine so I could stay in Plymouth, but fate took me to seven battery. I also realized I was in two nine commando regiment and two takeaway nine, seven. And I started, I didn't know what numerology was at the time, but I just started automatically doing it. Then I realized oh, I was in the army for seven years. Then I realized my birthday is on the January the 25th, 1974. Two plus five is seven. January seven letters long. One plus nine plus seven plus four is 21, which is three sevens. Um, there's a lot more to it uh, as well. When you look at the Matrix movie, then you will see that uh, there's a scene where Morpheus, Lawrence Fishburne's character, says to Keanu Reeves' character, Neo, do you believe in fate, Neo? And he said, no. And he said, why not? And uh, Neo said, I don't like to believe I'm not in control of my own life. So I, when I started to see this stuff, I was like, this is just very strange. Yeah, the Matrix helped me greatly, even with these little, little messages. It says trace program running. And of course, the event that we're setting up here is a running event. The, the relevance of Oasis as well is if there was ever a song about freedom, then the Oasis song, whatever, is that song. It is just perfect. And I know my American friends love freedom and they value it more than almost anything else. And, um, but there are several Oasis songs that are absolutely key to this event and very important and I will be promoting them no end. Thank you again Liam and Noel and everyone that worked on The Matrix. I also noticed that I mean even though I don't have a religion I do believe in a higher power, I believe in God um, but I was agnostic for most of, most of my life I think and um, but I just noticed a lot of things revolved around sort of Christmas and I like giving stuff. So Santa Claus and there was stuff about Jesus that I could sort of relate to. I was born on the 25th. Uh, my brother of Darren, he's a carpenter. Um, I was born just outside Bethlehem, but Bethlehem, Pembrokeshire, Harford West and Bethlehem, Harford West is where I was born. Yeah, I was born in St. Thomas's Hospital. Um, although I haven't read any um, religious books, for me, the most important gospel is the gospel of St. Thomas. Um, of course, in the Matrix, his name is Thomas, Thomas Anderson. Um, and uh, with setting up this event, for many years, it was just too difficult. I just didn't have the strength. I didn't have the ability. Then in February 2023, there are a lot of awesome things happening in my life, very exciting things. And um, I was in Knightsbridge in London. I was, I believe, opposite the Mandarin Oriental Hotel, somewhere in between there and Harrods. And um, my sodium levels crashed. And what I didn't know at the time was I was drinking so much water, I'd sort of drunk so much fluids, I'd sort of, the salt had sort of gone out of my system and I, you know, being a fitness trainer, I was always like, right, get loads of water down me. Um, but there can be too much water. So I ended up in the middle of the street in Knightsbridge and um, I caused a massive traffic jam right through Knightsbridge, right through Piccadilly, right through to Victoria at least. Uh, that side of the street was shut down. So I do sincerely apologize for any people that were stuck in that traffic jam on that day in February 2023. The police came, um, they lifted me out of there, uh, they got me off the floor and um, I wasn't really making much sense so the, the, the logical for that thing for them to do was um, they didn't send me to hospital, they sectioned me and uh, that's when things went bad from bad to worse. I had been through stuff before there was a very challenging you know, relationship breakups, financial challenges, physical pain, um, uh, tough, like ultra distance challenges, things like that. Losing people that are very, very close to me, all very, very 
very hurtful things, very um, challenging things, but nowhere near as challenging as February 2023. I could only really describe that as pure hell. So then I was sectioned, my, I was nearly dead from lack of sodium. Then I was put in solitary confinement. Um, so at that point, I, I, I thought that I was done. I was never gonna get out of that place. I had massive sleep deprivation as well on top of that. Um, I ended up, God, I, I think it was covered in my own feces all over my face and my mouth. Um, by the time I had got out of that mental health facility, I had frac, I had, um, injuries to my face. I had, um, head injuries. I, my eye sockets were fractured. I remember being dressed in blue and pink pajamas. And of course, no one's going to take you serious being dressed in that. Um, I was then shipped to a mental health facility in Haverford West and there the staff, I got to say, they were wonderful. There was a wonderful girl called Amy that looked after me like an angel, but they were all really, really great. Um, and then I had seen the psychiatrist, uh, the first psychiatrist, and he said, uh, he said he had never seen sodium levels that low in his life. Um, I was just very grateful to still be alive. I went back and was assessed by another psychiatrist. And of course, the first thing I knew I had to do was get myself out of the pink and blue pajamas because you don't get taken seriously in that. So I got my clothes back. Very weak at the time. Um, they had drugged me with this horrendous drug called lorazepam, which um, brings on nausea, vomiting, all of this sort of stuff. Um, it was just horrendous. So I had that on top of massive sleep deprivation, the nearly dead from low sodiums. I just wasn't functioning properly. There's more, a lot more to the story than this. I remember going to Withybush Hospital in Haverford West and people I've known for many, many years, they didn't recognize me. I was bashed up that bad, tortured. It was, uh, it was nasty. Then I was assessed by the psychiatrist and I'd say like a few weeks before that happened, if you would have said, go and run 30 miles, I could have done it, no problem. Um, but I could barely walk. <laughs> I was so ill, so bad. And then the next week I got assessed and I got my sodium levels were a bit better. My strength was starting to come back. So I was more like Mark. I was like, hi, hi, how are you doing sort of thing. And um, then the psychiatrist said to me, hmm, he said, well, you were very low last week. Now you seem to be unusually high. What would you say to going on a course of bipolar drugs? And I just thought, fuck's sake. I just, I'm literally trying to get out of this place and get my life back together. And there's no disrespect to anyone. I knew I didn't have bipolar. Um, which isn't a bad thing if you've got it. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I know, I know who I am. I know what I've got and what I haven't got. And uh, I know myself. So um, I had to sort of play a game to fight, fight to get out of there. I then said, all I'm asking is let my sodium levels get back to a normal person's level and please Google my name. Because when I told them I was an ex-army commando, a bodyguard, an author, nobody believed me. They just thought I had delusions of grandeur and I was, you know, so I said, let my sodium levels get back to normal, please. Google my name. And then when I went back next time, they started to believe me. And eventually I got out and um, I got out. I decided not to carry on doing the business that I was doing with my friend, Mark Billy Billingham, fantastic guy. Um, off the Channel 4 SAS Who Does Wins TV show and also on an American show, um, I think Special Forces, World's Toughest Test, something like that. Um, great guy, um, great wife, great family, love, him, love them all to pieces, but um, I needed time on my own then. Uh, so I told my financial director, Tracy Morris, I just needed time. Um, it was shortly after then 
Um, I was supposed to go for a meeting with Bear Grylls, but sort of didn't turn up because I was ill. Bear was totally amazing. He forgave me and we met up again. I showed him the event and um, yeah, he was very positive about it. So I'd like to say a massive thank you um, to Bear Grylls for your support and all the other people that are involved and have uh, supported me and encouraged me with this. Um, I'm very, very grateful. Thank you.